What I'm going to show you now is how to use the Dragonfly's Fusion software to acquire simultaneously with two cameras for a dual camera imaging workflow. What this will mean is we will illuminate a sample with two lasers at the same time and uh, collect the light from two fluorophores simultaneously, one fluorophore on one camera, one fluorophore on the other. Uh, to do this correctly, I have detailed instructions which are available on the desktop of this computer and which I have pulled up here. Um, if you're following along with this video, I recommend you um, print out these instructions so you can follow along. Uh, there's a few important points before starting. Uh, the first, uh, and you can see them here, the first is that the cameras are well aligned amongst each other at 1.0x mag, but they're poorly aligned at 1.5. So if you're imaging at 1.5x with these magnification units on either or both of the cameras, and um, if you're using uh, dual camera imaging, it needs to be on both. This has to match the for the two cameras. On 1.5, things are going to be misaligned. Um, it's not possible to have the system aligned perfectly at 1x and 1.5, so we've elected to have it perfectly aligned at 1x. And that's not something that we can easily change. So keep that in mind um, when you do this. Uh, a second important point is that even at 1.0x, the chromatic alignment is not perfect. If you're going to make really fine measurements, they are going to require calibration with tetraspec beads, so beads that are fluorescent in multiple channels, and post hoc corrections. So to show you what I mean by this, I have here uh, data taken on uh, beads of that sort, which have multiple fluorophores on them. This is uh, a two-channel image where both channels were acquired with the same camera. And you can see here that wherever there is a red dot, there is a corresponding green dot. If you look very carefully, you might notice that at the edges, there's a slight mismatch. And so that's typical. Objectives are not perfect. And so around the very edge of the field of view, there may be slight imperfections. But overall, there is a very good match between the position at which the red dots are and the position with the, at which the green dots are, which is as expected because uh, these are beads, these are sub-resolution, so very small beads that are covered in a green and a red floor for, therefore, the image should show those two 404s perfectly co-aligned. So this is if we do everything on the same camera. Uh, this other one is if we do it uh, with a dual camera protocol where we send the light from one of the floor force to one camera and the light from the other to another. And you can see here that uh, it's a very different story. So while some regions of the, um, of the image, there's quite reasonable alignment between the channels, in some of the corners, uh, it's quite bad. And this is actually uh, not something that can easily be fixed with an alignment because it's not a rotation of one camera relative to the other, and it's also not a translation of one camera relative to the other. Uh, so, so even if we improve on this, there will always be some sort of imperfection in the system. And the only way to correct for it will be to take an image like this with a bead slide and then uh, measure the imperfection and correct for it uh, after you've done your imaging. So uh, keep that in mind. That's an important point when you're going to do this kind of experiment. Um, as I mentioned, cameras will operate simultaneously, and both lasers will be on at the same time. Uh, you'll see uh, later when I show you an example that this is going to cause uh, some issues with uh, crosstalk between the channels, particularly from the short wavelengths to the long wavelength channel. Uh, the Ixon will always be the primary camera, so there will be, in these kinds of imaging, there's a primary camera that drives the imaging and a secondary one that just follows that primary camera. Um, and so in this case, the Ixon will always be the primary camera. This means that the uh, exposure for the Ixon must be larger than for the Xyla. That's um, just a condition of this kind of imaging. The lasers and the powers of those lasers will be set in the Ixon channel, and the Xyla must be triggered externally by the Ixon. Um, so one other point that I want to make here, which is if you recall um, the video describing the different channels on the system, uh, we are going to pick channels from these two families, DC40 LP565 and DC40 LP500. And so these families of channels will allow us to do GFP and actually DAPI as well, though that's uh, atypical for, for this kind of application, in combination with RFP or Sci-5. 
And uh, this family of channels will allow us to do CFP in combination with YFP or RFP or Sci-5. Uh, and finally, an important point is that it will always be the case that the shorter wavelengths will be on the Xyla camera and the longer wavelengths will be on the Ixon. Okay, so that uh, is sort of the, the, the stuff that you need to know before we get into the nuts and bolts of how do we actually execute this protocol. So what I'm going to do now is just go over these steps and set up an example so that you can see uh, the different uh, steps in this workflow. The first step is going to be to add appropriate channels to the protocol. So we're gonna to go to a protocol. I'm just going to set up a time lapse without Z to make it simple. I'm going to go as fast as I can and just take 10 images. And here where we add channels to the protocol, I need to make sure that I add channels that are properly calibrated for dual imaging. So I'm gonna remove this one, which is a CF40 Xyla channel. And instead, I'm gonna click here and go to the category of channels called DC40 LP565. The reason is the slide I have has something that is sort of like GFP, which marks phalloidin, and something that's sort of like RFP that marks mitochondria. And so I need to use this family of settings. And as you can see, there's two short wavelength settings associated with the Xyla, a DAPI and a GFP, and two long wavelength settings associated with the Ixon camera, which are RFP and Site 5 And so I'm going to load RFP and GFP. Um, so important points that are in the, the steps is to load two channels from the same family. So you never want to confuse this family with another one, uh, the one that's LP500. Um, you have to be, have added one Xyla and one Ikes on EMCCD channel. We have to have added compatible fluorophores, which we have in this case, a GFP and an RFP. Um, and so now all of those conditions are met. So this first step of adding the proper channels is complete. So the next step is um, the Xyla camera has uh, 2048 by 2048 pixels, while the Ixon camera has um, 1024 by 1024. So we need to modify the Xyla camera so that the number of pixels match so we can pull off this dual imaging. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to go to the GFP channel, which is the Xyla, you can see it here. And we are going to set binning to two by two so that the Xyla has 1024 by 1024 pixels matching the Ixon. You'll see that there were some error messages here and those disappeared. Those were related to this uh, lack of two by two binning on the Xyla. Uh, another thing we need to do uh, so that we don't waste time, uh, is to verify that the emission filters are the same on both cameras. So the emission filters are here, and these have been set up in the channels. You don't need to do anything. All, all you need to do is verify that this is the same for both cameras. So this is the Xyla, this is the Ixon, and you can see nothing has changed. So they are both the same, uh, and we can keep going in the setup. Uh, we need to verify on the Ixon that the correct pair of lasers are selected. So since we're going to use, uh, we're going to do GFP and RFP imaging, and the Ixon is going to draw drive all the lasers, we need to have the 48 laser um, turned on. You can see it here. This is the one that's going to excite the GFP channel. And we also need to have the 561 laser turned on, which is going to excite the um, RFP channel. Now, we need this laser on in this camera, even though this camera is going to sense the fluorescence from the Cy 561. That's, that's perfectly fine, but we just need them both on, on this camera. We also need to make sure that on the Xyla, we have the correct laser selected for that one, which is in the case of the Xyla, since that's the GFP, it's only the 488. Okay, so now comes the trickiest part of this whole protocol, which is to adjust the exposure and laser powers for good signal and minimal crosstalk. And the minimal crosstalk is, is really the thing that, that can get a little bit uh, tricky here. So, so let's start uh, by getting an idea on the Xyla of whether 100 milliseconds and 2% laser power give a reasonable result. So I'm just gonna go, I'm on that channel. The live will only mark the active channel. So I'm gonna go to live. And you can see this looks quite good. 
Um, so this would be a reasonable starting point. Uh, however, recall that we are going to illuminate both lasers on the sample at the same time and collect the light from both emission channels onto each camera simultaneously. So now let's see the kind of the more difficult question, which is what the signal looks like on the EMCCD. So I've switched to the RFP channel. I'm going to go to live. And you can see here, even though the signal looks quite bad, that I'm getting a lot of contamination. Part of this looks kind of like the green signal. And you can check that this is true by turning off the uh, 561 channel. And you can see this is just the 488 in the supposedly RFP channel. We're getting a lot of crosstalk. So um, clearly this the, you know, kind of this initial situation, this is not going to work. You can also see that the signal is quite noisy. Um, so that we can fix uh, by increasing the EM gain. I'm going to do that now. If I go from 5 to 10, you can see that the noise goes down. If I go from 10 to 20, the noise continues to go down. If I go to from 20 to 40, the noise goes down even further. Note that I'm on auto. So whenever I do this, even though the intensity may change, we're really just looking at the contrast. If I go from 40 to 80, at this point, it's sort of diminishing returns. We, it doesn't look that different from an uh, EM gain of 40. Okay, so at least the signal to noise issue now is solved, but we do have this problem with the crosstalk. And so what can we do to address that? So what we can do is lower the laser power on the 488. So unfortunately, we're at 2%. We can't lower it further unless we use uh, engage something called low power mode. So in low power mode, the laser can go from 0.2 to 10%, whereas in uh, when this low power mode is off, it goes from 2% to 100%. So I'm going to turn low power mode on, and I'm going to turn it on on the other channel as well, on the Xyla. And now I'm going to go back to um, the 561 channel on the EMCCD, and I'm going to set the uh, 561 laser back to 2%. And now I'm going to see what it looks like if I'm at 0 0.2 on the 488. So if I go to live, you can see that now that bleed through from the 48 channel is much reduced. In fact, if I turn off the 561, you could just barely see it there, but it is significantly reduced. So this is a much better situation. You can see that I didn't get completely rid of it. Uh, and unfortunately, that's impossible uh, in many circumstances. So um, we have to live with this as good as we can get. So now what we need to do is uh, check the Xyla to see whether 0.2% laser power gives us an image that's acceptable. So uh, you may say, well, this is a little bit noisy, so we could increase the exposure on the Xyla. That looks a little better. Um, if we go back to the Ixon, uh, that's not going to change uh, anything because we haven't changed the exposure time. But note that in this kind of uh, experimental design, one of the conditions is that the Ixon, because it's the primary camera, it has to have a longer exposure than the Xyla. So I'm just going to set the Ixon to 250. So now we have a situation where the Ixon is exposed for 250 milliseconds. The Xyla is exposed for 200 milliseconds. There's a reasonable amount of crosstalk. Uh, that's a, pretty much as good as we can do. So we have concluded the adjustment of exposure and laser power for good signal and minimal crosstalk. Beware that there is nothing stopping you from making the Ixon exposure equal to or lower than the Xyla, but if you do that, there will be problems. I do not yet have a good idea of the minimum additional time to add to the Ixon exposure to avoid those problems, but certainly 50 milliseconds, which is what we've done here, is enough. Uh, the next step in the protocol is to verify that exposure time for the Ixon is larger then for the Xyla, we've done that. You can see for the Ixon, it's 250. For the Xyla, it's 200. Uh, you have to verify that the Xyla has the same laser power as the Ixon. It's 0.2. Here, it's 0.2, so that's fine. Now we need to set the Xyla as the secondary cam uh, camera in the protocol section. So to do this, we're going to go to the protocol section. We're going to click on the channel uh, that's the Xyla and click on this uh, chain icon and say link with this other channel. And you'll notice that it's below it, that means it's the secondary channel. So everything is being driven uh, by the Ixon. Um, finally, we need to set the Xyla trigger mode to external uh, with the star button. So we're gonna go here 
click there, and then you can see Xyla trigger mode. We want to set this to external. What this does is it allows the Ixon camera to tell the Xyla when to expose. Uh, once that's complete, we, we can verify whether all of this worked. I'm just going to close this out by doing live with protocol channels on. So if we do live with protocol channels on, we should see that both channels are illuminated. And you can see this looks kind of funky, but it even though it's doing apparently sequentially, things are happening at the same time, uh, which you can, if you, if you look kind of from the side at the sample, you'll see that both lasers are on actually at the same time. So I'm going to turn this off. At this point, if we hit the acquire button, what we'll get is a is an acquisition where both cameras um, acquire images simultaneously and both lasers are on at the same time. So we have a 10 repeats as fast as we can if I say acquire. Even though you'll see now that sometimes it appears sequentially, you can see green uh, and then yellow, green and then yellow, they are actually being acquired simultaneously. An important reminder is you, you need to make sure that when you go to the Xyla channel, if you're not going to do more dual imaging, you turn off this external mode and go back to normal for the trigger, uh, because else you can run into problems where you won't see uh, the uh, anything with the Xyla camera uh, if you if you try and set up another acquisition. So again, at the at the end, if you're not going to do any more dual camera imaging, just go to the star. And for the trigger mode, set the Xyla to normal. And make sure you're on the Xyla, because if you finish to here and you press this star, it'll be for the Ixon. So just make sure that you're setting the proper camera back to normal.